we are learning java basics on <laughs> a big course for selenium automation and today's agenda will be to talk about methods okay i have provided one link also where you know there is a good blog about and there is a good chapters about methods so let's read it out and understand what method is and uh, we have done this thing in in previous sessions actually so it's better we will do it quickly and we will jump to the parameterization and overloading concept okay so method is a block of code which only runs when it is called so yes there is a there is a block of code which will be executed only when you will call it it's like this and you can pass the data that will be called parameters into a method okay and methods can you are used to perform certain actions which are also known as function why we use method because you can reuse the code define the code and call it or use it many times so for example this will be the way to create the method inside your class there will be a method okay so method will be inside the main class or whatever class name you have then they have explained about what is my method it is the name of the method which you will give or any name you can give what is the meaning of a static that i don't want to cover as of now this is static part because once i will tell you about the object oriented concept and classes and object concept then i will cover this static part void means this method does not return any value void means it will not return anything about the return also we are going to see in next 10 to 15 minutes now how you are calling a method just by uh, you know putting its 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 name and then semicolon so with this example with this particular example if i'll copy okay and i'll put it here inside uh my just a minute so i copied the main also i should copy okay no problem so what we will do you know I will delete. So that basically I should paste from here instead of this. Put it okay. No error. No error here. But uh, when you will try to run this thing, let's run this it may show you a simple okay it's it's working fine it's saying i'm just executed how this is working let's understand let's format it you can select it and say source and then format okay so what how this program will get executed it's very simple you have created a block of code this one which will be executed only when it is called so in the 10th line let let me write another line here let me write here another line let's say end of program and I will not call this function. I'll comment it. So in Java, if you want to comment single line, you can put double slash. Okay. And this time, if I'll run this, it is printing end of program. That's it. Why? Because this is a calling of that method. The name of the method, bracket, semicolon. I have commented it. So, if you are not calling it, it will not go to this and it will not execute all these things. Okay. So, here my method is a block of code 
which is starting here, ending here, it may have any number of lines. It's not just one line execution. It can have other things also to execute. As of now, we have put just one line. So it's very simple. You create multiple methods and do your own things. Okay. Now, if I uncomment this and if I run this, it will get executed. Okay. So it is executing first. I am just executed and then end of program because once the execution of my method will be done, it will come back. It will come back to the 11th line it, and it will execute 12th line. Okay. Now, what, what is the other thing they are saying? So they're saying a method can also be called multiple times. So it's up to you how many times you want to execute. So this is my method. You can call it again. Okay. Let's say after end of the program, you want to call it two more times. So how it will be executed? It will execute my method and then it will say end of program. But then you have called it again. So whatever you are writing in the scope of my method will be executed again and again. Okay. Fine. What else? So it's saying that this is one exercise it's saying what you should put in the missing part okay so it's my method function call will be there okay fine next chapter about parameters so what it is saying that you can pass the parameters also if you want to uh, you know do different things so let's 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 take it as function demo2 or method demo2. Let's create a new one. New class. Okay. Method I'll make, I'll not make main function because this example is providing you so yes i'll copy it from here and it's very simple it's very good example to understand how it works okay so let's understand this program now and basically every every method is independent method right it will do it do its own thing what we are doing here is this particular method it will accept one string. It will accept one string. And whatever you will pass, right? It will capture it into this F name and it will print something. So let's say if I print something like this. So how the execution will happen, but execution will always start from main method this is your main method at tenth line it will it will come here right let's say twelfth line and then my method is called see this function call so it will go here it will execute this but this liam will go to this liam will be passed to this f name and then it will come here and it will print system.out.println liam qatestor. In the same jena, anza, all those things will be done one by one. Okay. I believe this is clear. This is not a difficult thing. But small, small program will, you know, build your um, concept about how function works. Okay, so you can pass as many uh, variables. So let's create another function. We'll create another function, but I'm copying it so that we'll make it fast. So here, I'll make it, the name will be print full name, print full name. And that will 
have first name and L name. It will accept two parameters and it will print F name then tab. If I want to put the tab in between, I can say backslash T in double quote and then L name. Okay, that's it. So if I have to call this function, I have to do it in this way. I will call it and I'll pass two parameters in double quote because you are passing strings. Let's understand. Whenever you will pass the string, you have to pass in double quote. If it is numerical value, then you don't have to put the double quote. That example also we will see. So print full name. Let's say if I give the name like Nitesh, Common. Q test logic. Right. So this time I'm passing two parameters, and this will be captured here in F name. This will be captured here in L name. You can give any other name also. Let's say India. Okay. And this. Now if you will execute this, it will execute, it will find out where is this function. Okay, it will get it. Okay, it's present at 28 line. Then it will pass this Nitesh to this, here, this to this, and it will, whatever you want to do with this, it will do it, right? So F name is, will become Nitesh, and L name will become India. So it will get Nitesh India. It's like this. Okay, see here it's printing. You can pass numerical value also. So I can pass, let's say, 34. Okay, so, but you're passing the third value. So it's showing me error that uh, the method printful demo is not applicable for the argument string string int. What it is saying that there is a function which accepts two string, but you are passing another thing right integer there is no method with this kind of definition so it's better you do a comma here and accept it as int age okay and i'll print age also so what i will write so the shortcut is if you want to write system dot out dot print ln write s y s o then do control space so it will do system dot out dot print ln and here I can say age is equals to, it's optional. If you want to do, put it into the double quote, it will print as it is. And then the value of the age, right? So you have just have to write age. So you have to put the exact spelling. This is case sensitive. If it is a small age, you have to write also here, small age. Here you can do anything because this is an, uh, you know, under the double quote. So you can say um, age of the member is plus age, something like this. So this time when you will execute the 16th line, right, it, it is calling a function with three parameters. So this will go to Okay, it goes in the order also. So first will go to F name. Second will go to the matching string, right? Then 34 will go to the age. It's like this. So this time, if we'll execute it, it is printing me Nitesh India. And then in the next line, age of member is 34. Same as it is, it is printing. And it's very logical, right? It's fun to do this, this thing. Do you guys have any question? You may be thinking why it is static, why it is void. That we are going to see right now. Okay. So let's assume that. Let's create one more. One more. So that we'll talk about the return part. And in a very simple, uh, in a very simple example, we will see that. 
So that is now method demo tree. I'll make my own new function. Now, without thinking about what I want to write in the main, I can create one function. I'll say static void do addition do addition and I can have three variables here integer x comma integer y comma integer z and I'll do addition. So I'll say integer b is equals to x plus y plus z and I'll print it. So I'll say system dot out dot print ln and here I'll say let's say don't say anything just print it so b okay now if I want to call this function what I will write here if I want to call this do addition function obviously what I am going to do I will simply say do addition, do addition, and I'll pass three values. So three comma ten comma let's say nine. Okay. So I want to call this do addition function, and it'll pass three, ten, and nine. So this is very obvious. This is a very simple program. If I'll execute this, it is printing me. 22 why why it is printing 30 uh, 22 so very simple because 3 because 3 10 and 9 which you are passing it will go to the x y and z and then what whatever we are doing for that particular method is integer b is equals to adding all these three values and printing it done done but what is the return? What is the return thing? Let's say you want to do the calculation, but you don't want to print it here. You don't want to print this here. So what you can say, you can say return, return B. Instead of printing it there, you can do it like return B. What does this mean? Return means from wherever this function is called return it. It's like this. Okay. It's like return gift. So, so you are doing some method, but after that, return, return wherever it is called. It's like this. But when you are saying return a particular value, you cannot put void here. Okay. So if you are putting the integer to be returned, then you should say static end here. It's a very simple concept. Whatever you are returning, that should be the type of the function. This is called function type or the function return type. So if you are not returning anything, it will be void. But if you are returning a particular kind of data, then you have to understand what kind of type of data it is. So if it is a string, you have to put it here a string. Here you, are, you want to return one integer value. So you have to write it here integer. That's it. But this program will not do anything. If I will run this, this is not going to print anything. It's not going to print. See here, nothing has happened. Done. Program is executed. So whenever you're returning anything, you have to catch it, right? So here you can write integer any variable name or let me put it result the result is equals to this what you can do now is so you are saying do action do addition 3109 it will be called here it will do its own thing and it will say return b so so whatever is the answer will be captured in b so basically these will be executed like this int result is equals to b okay it will be like this because when you say return 
once the things are done, this will be replaced by B. I am repeating it. This particular thing will be replaced by B. Why? Because you are, you are saying return B. So wherever this function is called will be replaced by B after this execution. So this will become int result is equals to B. Okay. That means whatever is the addition is has come into result now. Now you can print result. So you can say, you can say addition result is equal to plus result. Okay. So that is why we say returning it. Right. Now, I guess you guys are able to understand it. It's not a difficult thing. Instead of printing it at 16th line, we are capturing it into the result and then doing the print and all. And this is a good practice. Whenever you are doing, you know, you have a function, do the things which is minimum required, right? The task of this function was do addition. So do it. Don't print or anything. Just do it and return it to, to wherever it was called. Simple. Okay. Let's see another example if we can have quickly from here. Method parameter. So the same thing it will talk about what, what I have shown you. But return value. Um, this is good. To, to understand one more thing. So let's create this one, just this. One class can have many functions. I can have one more functions here. And tell me what will be the output of this program if I call my method and I'll pass 33 here. Tell me what will be the output of this program? You have to tell me what will be the output of this program. Not here. It will come in main method because you are calling it. No? I am showing you again. Tell me what will be the output of this program. Okay, explaining it, how it will be done. We'll not talk about this seventh and eighth line. It's already we have discussed. Now in the tenth line, we are writing it directly system dot out dot print ln in the bracket my method 33. This is the function call, correct? Right? And you're passing a value. So this will be called and line number 13 will be there, let's say. So 33 will be passed to X and uh, because you are executing it. So there is a 14th line, which is saying return five plus X. So five plus the current value of X is 33, which you have passed from here. So return 38, it's saying return 38. So this will be replaced. My method 33 will be replaced by 38 and it will print 38. That's it because you have you are saying system dot 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 print ln 38. Okay, it's like this simple one. Do we have any other example? Yeah, this we already talked about like addition, right? We did it for three three values. Any other example? Same thing. We did it. We have done something similar for addition part anything else this one is good so if you want to check whether a particular 
person is uh, like adult and you want to make them enter to a cinema hall or somewhere based on based on their age this one is a good example of um just a minute to understand you know how system works how when you are using any any online system right online websites you must have seen a lot of messages right that okay do this thing do this thing error message and all okay so it's a very simple function what it is doing let's understand there is a function check age which will accept one integer value and then we are putting if else in that code block then we are putting if else in that code block and we are saying that if age is less than 18, then access denied. You are not old enough. Else, you are, you are old enough. That we want to print. We are not returning anything. The type is void because you want to do something and you don't want to return any value here. So, you are not returning. So, when you are not, there is no return statement, then you can put void here. Okay? Void means nothing, null. Okay, now if I want to call this function, I can call it here or anywhere. I'll say check age and I'll pass, let's say 34. So if I'll run this, right, if I'll run this, let me run in debug mode so you'll understand what I'm doing and how the control will be jumped. Okay, so this time. We'll run this in debug mode. Debug as Java application. Okay. So this is at line number 12 now. This will jump. See here. I'm doing step over. It is jumping to line number 31. The current value of age is 34. So it's saying 34 is less than 18. So it, this will be false. So it will go to the else part. And it will print access granted okay so the very same program let's put some other age so let's say if i say um hold on hold on okay i ran it i, I have to debug it actually so this time if i'll pass age is 10 okay and now i will say debug as java application and this is here now. If you see here, the current value of age is 10. 10 is less than 18. True. So it will go to line number 32. It's printing it. And then it will not go to the else part. Because if, you know, if you are already executing the if part and it is valid, it is true, then it will not go to the else part. So this time, it, it is coming here, but it is it will not execute 36th line. It will go to the 39th line. See here. Done. And the execution is done. It is coming back to the main function to check. Is there anything else to execute? No, nothing is there. So your program is executed now. It's like this. So this is about parameterization in, in methods.